This is a First Coast News On Your Side special report. Facts, not fear. Sheriff Mike Williams, Fire Chief Keith Powers, and Emergency Operations Director Steve Woodard. As of this morning's update, the Florida Department of Health is reporting 901 positive cases of COVID-19 in Duval County, 78 hospitalizations, and 16 deaths. Additionally, our percentage of positive test results is at 5%. Last week, President Trump and his team of public health experts announced guidelines for opening up America. Again, a three-phased approach to reopening our economies and getting people back to work while continuing, continuing to protect American lives. In yesterday's press conference with President Trump, virus coordinator Dr. Deborah Burks mentioned Jacksonville by name. She said she had looked at our health department's data and used our city as an example of an area that's flattening the curve and meeting certain milestones to begin to reopen at some point in the near term. Before beginning a phased comeback, the White House says cities like Jacksonville must meet the following criteria. A downward trajectory in influenza-like symptoms and COVID-19-like cases within a 14-day period. A downward trajectory of documented COVID cases or a downward trajectory in the percentage of positive tests. In addition, hospitals must be able to treat all patients within normal capacity and without the need for crisis care and put in place expanded testing for at-risk healthcare workers, including antibody testing. As a city, we're already meeting many of these milestones. For example, we've been watching our percentage of positive tests continue to decline. You should see a chart up now that shows that decline. On April 6, our percentage of positive test results was at 6.3%. That number has been steadily decreasing. As of this morning, the Department of Health reports we are at 5.1%. This is important because it gives us a sense of how widespread the virus is in our community. If that number is going down, it indicates the virus is decreasing. And that means we be can begin looking at responsible and incremental ways to get back to work. As discussed in recent days, we've increased our testing capabilities and our hospitals are not at capacity but we still have work to do. As we meet these initial criteria, I would remind the public we are currently under both a local and state safer at home orders. A phased in approach to returning to work must be and will be done in collabor collaboration with the governor and his team. Throughout this measured process, data and personal responsibility are paramount. As we, get, as we work to get our city and country back to work, we must continue best, best practices in order to ensure we do so safely and prevent a resurgence of COVID-19. Jacksonville, we're on the right, right track and will continue to move forward. As I plan our next steps toward reopening our city, I'll be consulting with an informal group of business and health leaders who will collaborate with me on safely returning to some sense of normalcy and work. The group includes leaders such as Daniel Davis, President and CEO of the Jacks Chamber, Melissa Dykes, JEA's Interim Managing Director and CEO, Nat Ford, CEO of the Jacksonville Transportation Authority, Dr. Diana Green, Superintendent of Duval County Public Schools, Eric Green, the CEO of Jacksport, Steve Halverson, Chairman of the Haskell Company, Dr. Leon Haley, CEO of UF Health, Jacksonville, Dr. Matt Rill, Founder and CEO of Telescope Health, Darnell Smith, Florida Blues Market President for the North Florida Region. Kent Sturman, COO of Total Military Management. Mark Van Lowe, COO of the Jacksonville Aviation Authority. And Jenny Vipperman, Chief Lending Officer for Vistar Credit Union. So our goal there, we will talk uh, weekly uh, and work to make sure businesses have the information they need, that they can engage. Uh, we have the heads of the independent agencies uh, in the Duval County Public Schools as a part of this group uh, in conjunction with the city of Jacksonville as we all have infrastructure projects that are necessary and must be done in the years ahead. We're going we're gonna to collaborate and determine what infrastructure proje projects we can move up. They need to be done. Let's get people back to work. And then also the healthcare uh, professionals uh, will help us with testing. Uh, capacities for the foreseeable future, antibodies, hospital capacity, and all of the things that will come with making sure that we'll return in a safe way and we have protocols and things in place to stay safe. I understand the anxiety and frustrations many citizens and business owners are sharing with me via email, social media, and more. 
I want to get our city back to work as much as anyone, but my top priority is the health and safety of the people of Jacksonville. So we have to move forward in a cautious and incremental way. For now, I'm asking the people of Jacksonville to keep doing what you're doing. We remain on a safer at home order at the state and local level. We should all be practicing social distancing. Wear masks if you're in grocery stores or out getting other essential items. I cannot stress the social distancing enough. I still continue to see, not widespread, but I see people in grocery stores and even sometimes in neighborhoods aren't necessarily keeping their distance. Just be, please be disciplined about this, be smart about this, and not only will we continue to flatten the curve, we go back to work in a way that, uh, uh, safe, in a safe way, and we don't return with a resurgence. Continue to frequently wash your hands and follow CDC guidelines. We must demonstrate personal responsibility for our personal health and safety and for those of our neighbors. I would remind people to make that seven o'clock call tonight, uh, reach out to someone, uh, listen to them, share with them and hear them, uh, and you'll make a difference. With that, we'll take questions. Jim with WJXT. Mary, you said uh, that we have more work to be done before you can reopen, but I'm just wondering your reaction to what happened in Georgia about them you know, already next week putting steps in place and uh, what we're seeing happening there. Do you see that happening here anytime soon that we're going to go right back to where we were? Uh, well, I'm not, as I said yesterday, uh, I think I used New York as an example. I'm look, Georgia's got their protocols in place. They're talking to their, you know, health experts and they're making decisions based on information they have. So, um, I can't speak to that. Uh, what I can speak to is that, uh, we're under a safer at home order that's statewide right now. I know the governor wants to get us back to where we can open responsibly. I do as well. Um, as you look at the, tra the trajectory, we've, we've met some of the stuff in phase one. So we are eyeing uh, not a specific date, but we are eyeing a near-term uh, timeline to begin to incrementally open some things up. Uh, and we'll, we'll do those in a way that the safest way possible where people can be socially distant and uh, it will require some personal responsibility and behaviors. So again, no date specific, but these, conversations are happening uh, about a near-term incremental reopening. Bridget with Action News. Uh, hi there. How many people locally have been tested at the two sites? I don't know if you have that number on hand. Um, and as far as the past few days, the testing site at uh, Lot J, weather has closed it down several days in a row. Has that set you back as far as projections or test numbers? Has that changed anything because we're not able to test as many people on those days? Uh, so we've tested just over 18,000 people. And yesterday I cited one study, there's many studies, but I cited one Harvard study that the New York Times reported on that said if you do it per population, Jacksonville would have to do about 1,500 tests a day. Many days we're meeting that and we continue to expand capacity. I would say lot J, uh, that, look, that's when you, when you set up convenience testing that's outdoors, which you have to have as a supplement to other testing, you have weather risk. And so when the weather risk happens, uh, we have to act appropriately and remind people there's any other number of options to get tested. Hospitals are testing the department of health. You can call the department of health. Um, Prime Osborne has center has testing. So lot J is not the only source of testing in our city. We're adding another walk up, uh, walk up testing site that I mentioned yesterday as well and expect to see even more expansion. Danny with action news. Hey, so do you know how much money from this new stimulus bill will go to our local hospitals? I, 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 I don't. And how do you I know, I'll share. And how do you feel about being selected for Governor DeSantis's reopening task force? Uh, look, Governor DeSantis and I and his team have talked uh, and collaborated through this entire uh, crisis, this entire pandemic. And so Governor called me last week uh, just to check in on Jacksonville. And at the end of the call, asked me uh, if I would like to be a part of this, and I'm honored to. And uh, I think it'll also give us as a city some insight as to 
best practices uh, as I'm as we're contemplating locally how we reopen. And uh, as I said yesterday, uh, one size doesn't fit all. Uh, every city and every county have differences based on population densities, population per square mile, uh, the types of businesses, et cetera. And we'll be considering all that as a city as we move towards a reopening. Mike with the Daily Record. Yeah, hi, Mayor. Um, uh, in, in regards to uh, Governor DeSantis's reopening task force, um, he's uh, taken a little bit of criticism um, in the in the media about uh, not having um, a, a doctor um, actually on his uh, executive com on the executive committee. Of that, uh, your advisory council does have two two uh, medical doctors. Uh, are, are, you, are you concerned that the governor may not be getting uh, that uh, that medical advice when he drafts these policies to to reopen Florida? Uh, not at all. And here's here's what folks need to realize: just people on an executive committee or a task force or an advisory committee aren't necessary. Aren't the only people that any someone in leadership is listening to. I know for a fact, based on a call. I mean, I've known this the whole time, but I was on a call this morning. Um, the governor and his team are talking to physicians about this, so uh, that that doesn't concern me at all. And I just think it's a it's an unfair news cycle for him. Vic with WJXT. Good afternoon, everyone. I know that we are, you know, following the numbers here, but I want to ask again about our first responders. This is for Sheriff Williams, Keith Powers. Uh, what's the situation there as far as our resources? How are they doing? And then the second part of that is probably specifically for Chief Powers, because there was a, a big fire where a lot of resources were used, both JFRD and JSO on Huron Street on the west side. What's the latest on that one? So Vic, I'll, yeah, thanks, Mayor. I'll answer first. So we, we still are at like, you know, well, less than 1% of our workforce impacted by, by COVID. So we've got a lot of additional COVID missions that we picked up over the last few weeks uh, that, that we're managing pretty well. And then in terms of the fire last night from the JSO response, I mean, none of the COVID operations have impacted our day-to-day -day operations. So we're fortunate to be able to use people who are off. Now, the longer... Uh, that this goes, uh, the more you're impacting people's all time, then they have to come back to the normal work cycle. So that's something that we're watching and managing very closely. But, uh, you know, we've got a lot going on, but we're in good shape. And uh, I don't think the fire from the JSO side, the fire last night, did not really have a, a huge impact in terms of, you know, a negative impact on resources. Chief Powers. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Vic, um, we're about 1% of our workforce. We uh, got some more folks back yesterday. We're down to 15 um, JFRD men and women that are still out with COVID-related issues and have more of those coming back in the next week or so. So uh, we're getting in a better place. As far as the fire goes last night, um, I want to say this to start with. If JSO and JFRD did an outstanding job last night. The men and women that, you know, that work out in the, in the streets, um, they, uh, they pulled a lot of people out of that building last night, and had it not been for uh, JSO arriving on scene when they did and, and the men and women of JFRD getting there and getting those people out, those, there would have been a lot more fatalities. And I am at uh, liberty to announce that there was a, there's been a second fatality in that fire, and a third person is critically injured that's been taken to uh, UF Health in Gainesville to the burn unit, uh, sustained over 40% of their body. Lou with First Coast News. Um, may seem insensitive to jump off that point, uh, but quickly, I, Mayor, has it crossed your mind? I, I was listening in on that uh, Reopen Florida Task Force uh, call today, talking about bed tax in South Florida. And I, is, is bed tax something that's, that's crossed your mind? Have you seen any projections about how it could be impacted here with uh, tourism obviously down? And are any potential projects down the line with, you know, sports complex benefiting from something like the bed tax um, that you can anticipate? Is it even something you think about? Yeah, it absolutely is. Bed tax, sales tax, our CFO is, has run projections. Our team will be going through those projections with him. As I, I, I can't speak to specific projects right now. Uh, what I can tell you is that, as I've said before, uh, this economic crisis that we're in right now because of this pandemic is, is, is going to be like something, I don't know that this city has seen it in recent history. The question will be how quickly do we rebound? 
since uh, this was this is a widespread economic crisis that happened because of a shutdown. Does it rebound quickly when we go back to work? We don't know the answer to that. We do know the budget budget's going to be very tough. It's going to be about priorities, priorities that are about uh, people, uh, their families, and getting people back to work, uh, which will also include infrastructure projects. Chris Hong with the Times Union. Hey, I got two questions, Mayor. Uh, the first question was the data that uh, you presented on those charts earlier in the press conference. Does that include testing um, from private, you know, or primary care doctors that outside of the um, the two government run testing sites? It Sorry, go ahead. Oh, so I'll let you ask your second question. Then. Okay. And the second question is, um, do you have a time? I know you don't have a timeline of when the reopening will start. Do you have a timeline of when we're going to have an idea um, of what the plan is going to be? Yeah, so first answer, uh, that does include all testing. All testing is, re is reported to the Department of Health. They compile those numbers, and that's, that's where we get that information. Uh, Christopher, as to a timeline, it's we literally examine this stuff every day, every evening. Uh, I'd say uh, we're well positioned, given where the numbers are leading us right now, to uh, to begin some sort of an opening. Here's what we won't do: we're not going to surprise and spring an opening on people. Like, okay, you can open tomorrow. This can open tomorrow. Uh, we'll give people time to prepare thoughtfully and strategically so they can get back to their place of business and open it in a way that's safe. But here's some of the things people ought to be thinking about. Whatever your facility is, uh, there's going to have to be social distancing. So if you're a restaurant, uh, if you're some sort of uh, you know, place where people perform, a gym, for example, without timelines, anywhere you're going to be in a building, you're going to have to, we're going to have to have protocols in place that we'll lay out, but start thinking about how to social distance. You got to start thinking about entry points. Uh, what we cannot have is, for example, entertainment venues, not talking about concerts. We're not going to be having concerts anytime soon from the information I've seen, but entry points. You don't want large groups of people at an entry point. How do you space out people when they're coming into a place? So those are the, some of the things, some of the things people ought to be thinking about at this, at this point. And, and I would also add that, I, I, I named a group today of folks that, that I'll be talking to regularly. Uh, this is this, a con I've been having a conversation. I named names of uh, uh, public health uh, leader, leadership la a couple days ago, last week. Those calls will continue. I will continue to be in formal and informal contact with physicians that aren't necessarily on that the group I just put together and with hospital leadership. It's important that, uh, that those discussions continue. Jim with WJXT. Mayor, there's a rally scheduled today in front of the courthouse at 2 o'clock, uh, very similar to what was uh, to the Michigan rallies from yesterday. Do you have anything to say to those people that are going to be out there, and were you aware of that? I would just ask people to uh, stay in their cars uh, and just practice social distancing. That's, that's my request. Um, it's uh, – th 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 look – the virus doesn't spread itself. People spread the virus. So whether you're in a grocery store, uh, walking on the beach, uh, walking your dog in your neighborhood, uh, participating in a rally, uh, please keep your distance. And I, I would hope that folks would stay in their cars. A I'm asking them to stay in their cars uh, respectfully. AG with Florida Politics. Hey, Mayor. Uh, good to talk to you today. I've got a question about um, tourism tax and sales tax receipts. Orange County said that they're $90 million in the hole from uh, tourism tax. I want to know what we're looking at for March figures and um, how this whole economic picture is affecting things like the pension obligation. I mean, obviously, the half cent was supposed to move over to uh, pension once Better Jacksonville's paid off, but it seems like this is going to delay everything. So I want to get some commentary on that some hard figures if you got them. Thank you. What was the first part of the question about um, sales tax? I didn't hear it. Yeah. What kind of hit did we get from sales tax and, you know, tourism tax? Like how much year over year are we down, you know, one March to the next? Uh, I don't, I don't have those numbers with me. I, I, they're going to, they're down. They're going to, they're going to be down significantly. Uh, everything is going to be impacted by this. You even mentioned the pension uh, obligation. 
But here's what we don't know, uh, because this is new uncharted territory. Whereas recessions in the past have hit certain industries and certain marketplaces, this is widespread because of a economic shutdown just came to a screeching halt, which means uh, the recovery will have some sense of volatility to it, we would expect. We don't know what that volatility looks like. Again, when, we, when, when, the, when our city opens and the state opens and the country opens, uh, at some point, are people going to have the confidence and we're going to see a spike or are we going to see spike up and down spikes? We don't know the answer to those questions. I think we have to plan. We will plan in our budgets as though the economic pain is going to last for a while and uh, hope that the volatility is a spike up and, and, and we get some good news there. Bridget with Action News, last question. I just have a couple more here. Um, can the city release the number of people infected at each of the local nursing homes and assisted living facilities? And then just a question about antibody testing. I know that uh, the state said that we were going to get those, the state's getting those here soon, if not already. I know there are some testing that's going on in Jacksonville. Will there be any type of testing site run by the city? And what will be the availability for antibody testing? I'll, I'll, I'll move that question to Director Woodard in a minute, but I will tell you the, the call that I was on this morning with the group that I announced today, one of the things I asked uh, that I want us to, to work towards is obviously expanded testing for the foreseeable future, rapid testing, uh, uh, antibody that you just mentioned. I, I mentioned that as well and discussed that and the ability for uh, the ability to handle patient loads uh, in the event uh, there's a wave at some point in the future. Director Woodard, I'll let you answer the nursing home question and if you have any specifics on antibody. Yes, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, the Department of Health is the official source for the nursing home information. I would refer you to them. Uh, we do monitor all the activities and all of the calls at uh, facilities around the county and those are important numbers for us, and we do look at those as, as part of our planning. As far as the antibody test, uh, we're in discussions every day with the state. Uh, we know that, the, and have been told as recently as this morning, the state is still trying to acquire those tests. There's obviously a backlog with uh, all the municipalities and other governments trying to get those. So uh, when they're available, that's something that would be a useful tool as part of the reopening process. Uh, and in closing, I would to the question about sales tax, bed tax, et cetera. I think there were actually a couple of those. Uh, I'll have our CFO. We'll get those numbers uh, in a format uh, that we can share share with you uh, at a, at another briefing. I would just stress to people: wash your hands, uh, wear a mask when you're out getting essentials. Please, please. It's it's not hard to do. Um, think about people around you, and. Stay six feet or more apart. 